cannabis common sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have an exciting show for you tonight. Uh, Tim Pate and I will be taking your phone calls in just a little bit. We have a few hip news stories. Uh, Tim's got a guest that's going to be accompanying him on the guitar. Um, we'll have film clips. Stay tuned. But uh, as we always do, let's bring out the infamous dancing cannabis leaves. <laughs> story in hip news tonight we've been saying this on this show for some time that cannabis is worth more than its weight in gold the black market prices for cannabis rose steadily in the 1980s declined during the 1990s and are once again increasing according to a federal report tracking the price and purity of controlled substances authors of the report analyzed over 20 years of data collected from the US Drug Enforcement Administration or DEA system to retrieve information from drug evidence that's stride the system to retrieve information from drug evidence. And that's a database that the DEA has. According to the DEA's data, quote, marijuana price trends are not highly correlated with trends in the process of other drugs over time, end quote. For example, the authors note that the street prices for cocaine and heroin fell during the 1980s while the price of cannabis rose steadily, peaking in 1991. The authors report that the average price for cannabis fell in the 90s, but began rising once again after 2000. The study concludes, quote, this recent price increase leaves current marijuana prices near their 20-year averages. Marijuana is quite literally worth its weight in gold, end quote. The report did not analyze long-term trends in marijuana potency because Stride fails to document the drug's purity. However, a 2006 report by the U.S. National Drug Intelligence Center states that, quote, most of the marijuana available in the domestic market is lower potency commercial grade marijuana, end quote. For the full text of uh, the White House report, The Price and Purity of Illicit Drugs from 1981 through the second quarter of 2003, it's available online at www.whitehousedrugpolicy.gov. Then it's under slash publication slash price underscore purity. Did you get that? I didn't think so. Okay, our next uh, story is from Vermont. Vermont has extend, expanded its uh, medical marijuana law, and the legislatures in Connecticut, Rhode Island, also are endorsing medical cannabis. From uh, Montpelier, Vermont, legislation to amend Vermont's nearly three years old medical cannabis program became law last week after Democratic Governor James Douglas allowed the measure to become law without his signature. It's the second time since 2004 that state lawmakers have approved medical cannabis legislation without the governor's backing. Under the amended law, which takes effect in July, patients with chronic debilitating conditions, not just life-threatening diseases, may use cannabis legally under the advice of their physician. Senate Bill No. 7 in Vermont also increases the number of plants that patients may legally cultivate under the state law and reduces the annual fee associated with the state's medical cannabis patient registry. Vermont's medical marijuana program is generally considered to be the most restrictive in the nation. To date, fewer than 30 patients are registered with the state to use cannabis legally under Vermont state law. Dozens of additional patients are expected to register with the program once Senate Bill 7 takes effect this summer. Legislators in Connecticut also approved legislation last week that seeks to enact statewide legal protections for patients who use cannabis under a doctor's supervision. House Bill 6715 now awaits action from Republican Governor Jody Rell. If enacted, Connecticut will become the 13th state since 1996 to legalize the use of medical cannabis, and it will be the second state legislature to do so this year. In Rhode Island, Republican Governor Donald Kasiri vetoed legislation this week that seeks to make the state's one-year-old medical marijuana law permanent. 
More than 80% of the state's lawmakers had previously affirmed the measure. Under state law, support of three-fifths of the state's elected officials is necessary to override the governor's veto. Unless amended by the legislature, Rhode Island's medical marijuana law will expire at the end of this month. Currently, nearly 300 patients and caregivers are registered to possess cannabis under that law. Leadership in the House and Senate said they expect to consider overriding the governor's veto before the adjournment of the 2007 session next month. So uh, we sure hope they can override that veto there and, and keep the law permanent. Finally, from Hawaii, the uh, county council has rejected federal fund funding for uh, cannabis eradication efforts. Out of Hilo, Hawaii County Council members unanimously voted last week to reject more than one half million dollars in federal grant money earmarked to pay for helicopter based marijuana eradication efforts. The council members elected to remove the funding from the county's 2007 2008 budget, noting that the 30 year old Green Harvest program, which utilizes low flying helicopters to search for outdoor marijuana gardens, has elicited numerous complaints from Big Island citizens. Prior to the vote, nearly 70 members of the public told the council that the aerial-based program upsets their livestock, disrupts local wildlife, and is highly disruptive to the residents' quality of life. The council had previously rejected funding for the program in 2000, but elected to resume funding in 2001. Despite last week's vote, police administrators are still expected to ask for the council uh, for their permission to accept the federal funding later this year. Hopefully, the council will keep turning it down. Uh, that is the end of our hemp news segment tonight, and uh, we'll be introducing Tim Pate. How are you doing, Tim? I am doing very well. I have a guest with me tonight. Mr. Dylan Brewer is going to join us, and I'm going to Hi, let him do one of his. Hello, good evening. One of his original songs is going to be with us as well. All right. Well, what's that called? T H C. Well, what an appropriate name. That's why Imagine we chose that. it for tonight. He actually pulled this out. He, he, he wrote this 10 years ago, and he pulled this out for me tonight. I asked him to do a special song for the show. All right. So, uh, uh, here we go. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> It is a known fact that the smoking of marijuana and the consumption of its main derivative, THC, can be used in the medical treatment of glaucoma, cancer, and now AIDS. Government studies show that the fiber and pulp of this miracle weed can put a stop to deforestation and at the same time provide clothes and homes for the homeless.
history of our country, our founding forefathers, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and George Washington, grew cannabis to help establish our independence from Great Britain. So did they sign our declaration and raise our nation's first flag. These are symbols of our democracy and our freedom. One thing in this world that you got to know You gotta plant a seed so the buds will grow Sweet sticky females are the best of kind I saw and high in the mind Get high now Get stoned Get high now Good job, Bo. Appreciate Good it. See you. I want to welcome our viewers out there, too. We are going to be taking your phone calls tonight. Uh, we'll be back. I'll have a few more songs a little bit later on. Uh, Tim Pate's going to be joining me up here. We'll both be taking your phone calls right up to the top of the hour. You can call us at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. And uh, how are you doing this week, Tim? Oh, I've had a really... That microphone. So there you go. Hey, that's a quick transition there. It is. It is a quick transition. Yeah, I'm still, you know, me sweating, catching my breath, all that. It was a good week. I had a very good week. I did. It was the, you know, beautiful weather week. A rose festival is happening here in, in Portland. And, and so there's an opportunity for a lot of people to come in from out of town and see what Portland's really about. And, it's true. And it's true. It's a, it's a all nice place to be. All the ships are in right now. All yeah. the sailors are here in town, yes. Yeah. 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 And then the big parade's tomorrow. That's Our right. Our big annual rose parade. You know, the Rose Festival has a whole series of parades, but the big one is the floral parade that happens on uh, Saturday morning, tomorrow morning. It's I, I got the chance to close the Rose Festival last year with my band, and, and uh, the Rose Festival happens to be one of the top ten tourist destinations in the nation. So, yeah, yeah, yeah there's a lot of people who come here just, just for that right now. That's true. The hotels are packed. They are packed. Well, we'll be taking your calls there at that number on your screen. We have our first caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hello? Hi. You were there? I can't hear you from my end. I can hear you. Okay, right on. Well, uh, hey, uh, there, there we go. I can hear you now. Um, we have I a was, delay there. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, I just harvested four strains and uh, wanted to see what you guys should think about my daytime or nighttime smoke. I got a purple indica, Sensi Star, the White Widow, and uh, MK Ultra. And I wanted to know which one would uh, probably be best to put me to sleep and knock me out. Well, you know, there's individual reactions that are hard to gauge from strain to strain. True. So it's real, it's very difficult for me, especially, you know, find, even knowing the standard of some of those strain types. Well, I know I, the phenotype. I can't either. really answer that question. I would say it's, you're going to have a tough job for you, but you're going to have to just test them. And I'm figure it out for yourself. Try. Which one puts you to sleep? That's the one you use. Yeah. It's kind of hard to try because when you're yeah. using them all. Well, you know, it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. I was going to say. <laughs> what's the well, problem I'll there? It up to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you guys have a good night. Thank all you. All right. Thanks for your, your question there. I wish we could help you. But. You know, it, it varies, too. I've learned uh, when you actually harvest a plant, whether it's going to be uh, a more something that would knock you out is more to speed you up. It, there's a variance there. So even the, even the horticulturist who grew that plant for him. Or you uh, could take the same plant, and if you harvest it uh, after it's been budding for four weeks or six yes. weeks or eight weeks or 12 exactly. weeks, each different harvest, you could have a completely different effect. That's true. That's, as that's the, true. The trichromes age, and the when the at first you're going to have clear trichromes that look like little silver 
uh, beads under your, your microscope or magnifying glass. Then later they're going to turn amber yes. and then gold and then maybe purple or red or yes. black even. So uh, it's hard really to say. They, and that's the resin uh, actually. Yeah, that is the resin. That's the good stuff. So uh, we are taking your calls here tonight. It is the 8th of June, 2007. So if you're watching on Friday night, the 8th of June, 2007, you can call us at 503-288-4448. We'll be taking your calls uh, up until the top of the hour, as we always do. And so uh, any update on the hemp stock? Um, the city has come back and turned down our security plan. Okay. You know, in our security plan, we uh, had uh, told uh, the city if there was anything we could do to improve it or anything that needed to be done, please let us know. Right. They told us it's insufficient, and they're turning down our permit. Not didn't tell us anything how it's insufficient. Right. So we're asking the Oregon ACLU to jump in and help us. We have the national ACLU helping us. Uh, fight a uh, federal subpoena for uh, 14 patient records and that's right. going forward looks like the trial or the hearing is going to be set over for a couple of months probably so that's and the, the Oregon Medical Marijuana Pro Program Office the state has mm -hmm. also received a uh, subpoena mm -hmm. so we've asked the federal court in Yakima to combine the hearings and we're not sure whether the state office is going to agree on that yet or not but it's at least two months away from adjudication. However, we found we've got probably, from what I've heard, the best judge in that area, and he held on to the case through his month-long vacation. So uh, everything gets set over, and uh, we'll find out what happens with that. But we're going to appeal it if they rule against us mm -hmm. and uh, go from there. It would seem like your interest in the State Department of Health interest would be the same here in keeping those files confidential. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's, I think it's to my interest and every other person who's ever had to go to a doctor, uh, mm -hmm. they'd want that. There was also the question of whether we should ask to combine it. You know, if they rule against the state, that the state uh, has to produce these records, well then, you know, they've already got them. Why do they need them from us, too? Right. And if they rule uh, in favor of the state, that uh, the state doesn't have to supply the records, well, well then, why, that, should, why should they do that for us? We have, as as the physicians organization and the the care keep the keeper care the, keeper of the medical records right. we should have uh, even greater rights than the the state agency that I agree. issues those licenses or that's generally the the precedent in those things but uh, we will see confidentiality is always going to be an issue uh, i used to direct a crisis center for pregnant teenagers and uh, i'm certain it would have been uh, very difficult for them to come and talk to me at all unless uh you know, if they thought that everything they said to me was not going to be confidential, and yeah. so uh, uh, I would think that that same same philosophy holds true with any doctor or any caregiver of any kind like that. Yeah, I think you're right. So let's uh, show some of these bottles we have here tonight. We have a whole assortment of these pint bottles, which are fairly rare. This one is a Park Davis tincture of cannabis. Uh, it's got a double label on there. It says analgesic sedative. Cannabis, according to Park Davis, is an analgesic sedative. And they're still in business. They are, and as is Eli Lilly. This is an Eli Lilly container. It's uh, fluid extract number 96. They had about 10 different cannabis concoctions, and this is their fluid extract cannabis uh, number 96. Next door, another company that's still in business, Sharpen Dome. Yes. Sharpen Dome's cannabis extract. This is probably from the 1920s. And these other two are probably from the teens during that period. Now, our next three items are pretty nifty in that most of the contents are still there. Yeah. Here we have neuralgic preferred pills. And you can see that we've got, oh, I would say about a third of them left. There, we've got a nice embossment on the back where it says the, the manufacturer's name. Uh, it's uh, Upjohn and, and, uh, and they're still in Mulford. Business. They're still in business, too. And here's another one. Now, this one is out of business. This is Sensa Persa, and this is a, a tonic and sedative for the nerves. And it says if you have a nerve problem, take one of these pills. And these, it's full of these little purple pills. Uh, um, of course, these things are over 100 years old, so I'm not going to try them or open them <laughs> or anything. We say, now, this one is full, too. This one is also from Upjohn, and it's 100 Cannabis Indica Extract Pills. 
from the Upjohn Company of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Even comes with the box it came in. Now that's a little mini container. And that little tiny bottle that's less than two inches tall has a hundred, a hundred of these nifty little pills. So that's uh, all our antique cannabis medicines. Now we're going to go to the modern age. Here's Manitoba Harvest's uh, hemp protein powder. It's uh, very, very nutritious, and you can get it at most health food stores. And here we have shelled hemp seeds. Now, these things are very, very tasty. Yeah. If you like cashews or walnuts or pecans, you're going to like these. They're kind of a blend of cashews and pecans. So that's a nifty little thing there. And then finally, last on our sharing or show-and-tell list, we have hemp twine from Hungary. It's been coming in the United States for many years, used in... Uh, tying down springs in furniture throughout Southern California, uh, hemp cord from Hungary. You can make neat, nifty little uh, hemp twine goodies out of that. Uh, Our nifty bracelets. big ones. Our big ones. Just about anything. I know. Well, yeah. that's the end of Show and Tell. Hope you enjoyed it tonight. Tune in next week. We have a caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hello. You here? Um, hi, Paul. Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, okay, I can hear barely you. hear you there. Oh. Go ahead. What's your question? I have a question. Uh, I've never used cannabis, but I am going to an acupuncture for pain. Uh, is that your your feet? I'll tell you what. I think there's some feedback there. And so if you have your television on, please turn <laughs> the television down because, you know, we have a little delay there and there's feedback. And maybe we can get a little greater uh, on, sound in the studio muted. without having feedback burst our ears. Okay, try again. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me now? A little bit a little bit better. Okay. Um, I haven't used cannabis before. Uh, I've been going to an acupuncture for pain. Uh, if I use any uh, cannabis, is that going to interfere with the uh, acupuncture treatment? Okay. Maybe I can get a little more sound in the studio yeah. because I heard something like, you're taking cannabis, and you want to know if it's going to interfere with something else, and I'm not sure exactly what. Yeah, I Try that one you. more time. Okay. Will cannabis interfere uh, with I'm acupuncture? I'm not taking cannabis. No, in fact, it probably will uh, uh, complement it. Oh, okay, but it will not interfere in acupuncture? Will cannabis interfere in acupuncture? Correct. Absolutely not. Oh, great. The Chinese use cannabis, and... Uh, has no effect on the, the flow of the chi. In fact, it helps your chi. Right. Cannabis well, is good you for much. your chi. Helps me achieve chi. Yeah. So I think it will complement your, your acupuncture. It complements many other things, I might say. But uh, I don't think uh, you'll have any problem there. But talk to your acupuncturist as well. It's always yeah. good to talk to your medical professional whenever you're doing something My like that. My guess is uh, they'll let you know their opinion on that. I agree. I, I, uh, uh, I think that anything that would enhance your, your recovery from whatever problem you have, and obviously uh, because we, we believe in its medical effectiveness, uh, uh, we, would, we would be in favor of that ourselves, but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, something that uh, uh, we say is ac accurate. So. Talk to your medical professional, but uh, it, I would think the indicators would say yes. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I like to read some of the labels off these things. I know. And they're kind of funny sometimes. I'm they're, almost afraid to touch them. They're so old. Sensipurza, these little purple cannabis pills. It's a tonic to assist in the restoration of the nervous system to a normal condition. A sedative to relieve hysteric conditions. Now, we all need that. I need a sedative to relieve my hysteric conditions. And uh, corrective for nervous indigestion. I don't have a problem with nervous indigestion myself. Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't. I, never... I have in the past, but I don't anymore. Uh, I've had indigestion, I, yeah. but I don't know if it was nervous indigestion. That's, ah. that's something I can't answer. It's important to stay calm, I am, and, and that's, that's what all this was about. That's right. And, you know, I think that, that helps your chi flow. It does. Well, in, in my... certain countries. I... Uh, Went to school in China for a couple of years, and in doing so, uh, learned a little bit about qigong and uh, acupuncture. In fact, I got a, several charts of acupuncture points, and they have these incredibly yeah. poetic, melodious names, like the Heavenly Gate of Eternal Bliss is one acupuncture point, and they've got other names that are very similar to that. Yeah. We have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hello, caller. 
Hi. Hi. This is, um, I, I watch your show quite often, and um, I just wanted to say, like he was, he had suggested, talk to your acupuncturist, because I go to acupuncture um, twice a week, and they know that I am a medical marijuana user. And what's their so, opinion um, of it? I was just going to say, you know, as a person that gets medical marijuana and has acupuncture, um, but yeah, you always should keep that. Um, let your acupuncturist know. Mm-hmm. How did, what, what does your acupuncturist say? Oh, my say? opinion was, I'm sorry because well, I muted it before I know I knew what the question was. My opinion was it's a good idea. <laughs> it's uh-huh. good. And, and does your acupuncturist? I'm sorry. The acupuncturist's opinion is that um, it's it's good because it does help with the flow of the chi. Like you had said, Paul, it's something about the flow of the chi. It helps relax you. And uh-huh. so when you're relaxed, the flow of the chi is, is healthy because there's right. nothing interfering. It's just going just regularly like when you're sleeping. You're sleeping. So, right. yeah, it's very, very good. On my opinion, and I I'm believe since I've been treated by more than one acupuncturist, that um, it, the three that I've been treated by, it's their opinion also that it's all right because they all know that I have medical marijuana. Great. There's great. a testimonial so, right there. Thank, thank you. you. And, thank uh, you. You guys keep up the good work down there. Thanks for your thank call. You. I really appreciate that. That's not something that I had previously considered, and so it was an interesting question. And with the wealth and depth of the experiences of our audience, you out there, exactly, been able to uh, help that lady know that. But I would just think because cannabis does help the the whole uh, nervous system. You know, that's what these medicines are telling us here. Exactly. And according to the recent science, they discovered the uh, receptor sites for cannabis, and it actually runs retrograde to all the other. Uh, systems in the endocrine system. You know, the endocrine system regulates all your hormones and chemicals in your body, and cannabis is the only one they know of yet, anyway, that runs in the opposite direction, kind of directing all the other systems in uh, how they should interact. And like they'll, it, it, it in your memory, it will destroy old memories, and that's one of the things that people have talked about. Its effect on uh, short-term memory. And in Israel, you know, the Israeli Defense Forces, their armies there are using it to forget the terrible things they're doing to the Palestinians. Our but vets are using it. Uh, they just don't have permission most of the time. Right. We see some nifty pictures in High Times Magazine with the vets with nice indica plants out there in the desert, or it seems like desert, mm-hmm. about the only green thing out that they have in their Oof. gardens. There's another story there. Right, there is. There is. They have my. They have my love and, and sympathy for having to do what they have to do. But I. I That's right. I. I. I, I, do I was dumb enough to enlist, so I know what can happen. And you actually served as well. I right? served, and I, I hurt myself at a, a young age and got out pretty quickly, which turned out to be a blessing because I got out with disabled veteran status, and that paid my way through college. And I got to study in China for a couple of years. There you go. But and start importing hemp paper and fabric, but that's another story. That is. We have a film clip we're going to run. We'll be back in just a second to discuss it. Hope you enjoy. Pronounced it correctly, Jack. Herrera. Herrera. Uh, Herrera. Okay. Jack Herrera. Jack Herrera. Jack Herrera. Jack Herrera. This is Jack Herrera. We're going to put on Jack Herrera. Hemp. Once I get the name, tell me a story. Cult acclaim has not made Jack a household name, nor does he live like an emperor. Most of his income from book sales goes to finance his causes, not his lifestyle. Hemp. When he's not on the road for weeks at a time campaigning for hemp and medical marijuana, Jack lives and works in this small cramped apartment in Van Nuys, California. Very singer. Jack is a cultural icon. He is probably as well known as anyone who's ever had a had an opinion uh, to offer on this subject. He is better known than probably anyone else who works on the marijuana law reform issue. Um, he is a uh, a phenomenon that's been very positive. Uneasy rests the crown on he who would save the world. Jack enters the new millennium, still grieving over the untimely death of Captain Ed Adair, taken by leukemia in 1991, a 
the age of 51. We had been together 19 years, the greatest friend a guy could ever have. He worked so hard to save this planet, and he believed he was saving it for you, me, his children, and he thought that this was the way to do it. Captain Ed and I planned was to get out and teach this information. Eventually we would get a cadre of believers and eventually they would go out and teach the world. And now we know that we've succeeded. And now we understand so much about the man. He's not insane, he is not crazy. He's not the devil in disguise. So listen closely to the winds of change and see the world. Despite some health problems, Jack has no plans to kick back and take it easy with longtime companion Jeannie Hawkins. With the publishing of the 11th edition of The Emperor Wears No Clothes in late 1998, Jack's schedule is more hectic than ever, taking him and his message around the world. Jack is haunted, however, by the hard, cold facts of prohibition. Despite its undeniable potential as the natural, renewable alternative to a synthetic world, the hemp plant, by federal law, still cannot be cultivated in the United States. Despite increasing public and scientific support, the medical use of marijuana still remains illegal. And despite the enormous cost in money and human lives, millions of people are still being arrested for possessing a therapeutic substance revered by our ancestors. This is the reality of America's war on a plant. A war born of commerce and greed. An endless war. And so, the fight goes on. And on. I don't know if hemp's going to save the world, but I'll tell you this. Is the only thing that can. Constitution, what we call Old Ironsides, became famous during the War of 1812. Kind of still go wagons, and the wagons that went west were covered with hempen canvas. All right, that is an excerpt from The Emperor of Hemp about Jack Herrer. And he's the author of a book called The Emperor Wears No Clothes. When that came out in 98, I think they were on the 11th edition. Now they're up to the 14th edition. He keeps updating it. And I'm always happy to remind our audience that the very first edition of that book was written right here in 1985 in my house here in Portland. Uh, and we were both working on the Oregon Marijuana Initiative, an unsuccessful initiative that would have allowed adults to grow and possess marijuana. And we made the ballot but lost overwhelmingly with just 26% of the vote in 1986. But it's still the petition that qualified the earliest of any other petition in Oregon state history. Yeah. Been cheated off the year before by uh, the Secretary of State Norma Paulus at the time. So uh, Norma paid the price though and uh, she lost her bid for governor. She did. And I think a lot of people realized how dishonest she was. Hey Wolfie, we've got Mr. Michael Wolf Siegel here. Hey, Paul. How are you doing? Uh, pretty well, thank you. you got an editorial you're going to be launching into here in a moment, uh, but we have a caller first. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Maybe not. Hello, caller. Are you there? 
Ooh, we've yep. had some technical difficulties, but that's okay. That's cool. If you have a question for us tonight, June 8, 2007, Friday night, give us a call at that number there on your screen. It's 503-288-4448. Since you have your editorial there, Wolfie, why don't you go ahead? Okay, I'd be happy to. First, I'd like to thank Paul and Cannabis Common Sense for giving me this opportunity to express my views tonight. The First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America reads in part that Congress will make no law abridging the freedom of speech or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. Um, what this means is that we have the right to stand up with others of like mind in public and be counted. It doesn't mean much if all of us have these feelings in our living rooms that, oh, I feel this way. No one knows that we all have these strong feelings. Well, for me and others who share my belief that hemp offers the best proven solution to $4 a gallon gasoline, to global warming, to world hunger, and to multiple medical conditions, this right is expressed when we attend and participate in hemp stock. The Park Department's refusal to grant us a permit is a refusal to give me and others like me a chance to get together and be counted. Because this is our chance to have the newspapers go, oh wow, look at all these people. It's our chance as a body of people who have a belief in common to have that political belief recognized. Um, now, the reason they gave us was widespread use of marijuana and alcohol. Um, I was very active with security last year. That was just not so. We demonstrated that um, at great length. They persisted in not giving us a permit. We offered them a proposal. Paul already told you about all of that. Um, but what's ironic to me, okay, this widespread use of alcohol is that there is four separate events sponsored by the Park Department which are about the consumption of alcoholic beverages. Now medicine's a wide enough field that there may be people out there whose health is made better by drinking, but I'm, betting, I'm willing to bet that none of them is going to be at any of the Park Department approved orgies of public drunkenness. Now, that might sound like it's a little strong. I blow harmonica on a street corner for a living. I work across from the festivals. I make my money by these people. Believe me, it's crowds of drunks coming out of them. That's what the Parks Department allows. And we as taxpayers pay for tens of thousands of dollars of extra police and emergency services as a result of it. For some reason, what this is telling me is that the Park Department prefers events that involve public drunkenness to allowing people to take their medicine and express their political views. Makes me mad as hell. Um, a friend of mine says, <laughs> put down the pipe and step away from the bong for a moment. Do something about it. Don't just whine. Well, do something. Write to your papers. Um, write to your mayor, write to your city council, but especially write to Dan Salzman at 1120 Southwest 5th, Suite 1302, Portland, Oregon, and say you want the ability to express your political beliefs in public. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. We'll be. And urge the ACLU out there to help pick up this uh, case because we would definitely appreciate their legal assistance. Our normal attorney has uh, some family emergencies she's got to deal with, so we could certainly use the ACLU's help right now. But uh, we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I love your show. I have a question for you. Go ahead. Kind of a legal question. I'm, I'm getting ready to get a permit, or I want a permit, but I also have a gun permit. Am I allowed to hold both permits? Yes. yes. No effect on them, either one. The folks okay, that so issue the gun permit have no way of knowing you have a medical marijuana permit. Okay. My, well, the reason why I ask is because if I'm in my vehicle and I have my gun on me and I'm carrying my marijuana, um, does that, being I have my gun well, permit, does that give them more of a right to search my vehicle and pull no, my marijuana No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't have any because you have a permit for that. 
Also, I would recommend not having your cannabis within, you know, just to make certain they can't charge you with driving while intoxicated or under the influence. Keep it somewhere away from you in the car so you, it's not right within your immediate grasp. And that okay, way yeah, that was just for like in transport from, you know, whatever. Right. And then my yeah. second question is, after I acquire my permit, um, would I be able to go through somebody at your show to get my starts and stuff like that together? To get well, there are several things out there. We'll be happy to steer you to Oregon Normal, which has uh, a program, a meeting tomorrow. That's right. Uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, at 11 o'clock. Liberty is Hall? At Liberty Hall. Well, noon is when they open, but you better be there early. 311 North Ivy. Thank you. 311 North, North, North Ivy. Ivy. Yeah, it's at 311 North Ivy for those people out there that have a medical marijuana permit. But we also have classes that are available once you do have your cuttings to help you get your, your garden going. We have both uh, beginning gardening classes and advanced ones. And okay. Oregon Normal is not the only folks that can help you get clones out there. There's uh, several other organizations that uh, can provide assistance as well. They really is that .com, OregonNormal.com? Yeah, O R. OregonNormal.com, exactly. Okay, thank you very much. O-R-N-O-R-M-L. Great. Dot thank you. org, Love your show. actually. You're welcome. Thanks for your call. Okay. Okay, so if you have a question for us tonight, give us a call at 503-288-4448. We'll be taking your calls for about another, oh, 15 minutes or so. Now, there are a number of conditions that qualify for medical marijuana out there, and we're going to pop those up on the screen. The number one one is... Uh, Chronic pain. Chronic pain uh, cause, has, I think, over 60, maybe 70 percent of the people who have a medical marijuana permit have it for a chronic pain condition, the largest of which are people with crushed vertebrae or bulging discs in their backbone or their spine. But there are a lot of other painful conditions. Anything that causes chronic and severe pain qualifies for medical marijuana. Also, anything that causes chronic and severe nausea. There are a lot of different conditions that can cause that. Uh, all the gastrointestinal ailments like IBS, Crohn's disease, GERD, also hepatitis C causes nausea and pain. AIDS qualifies as does glaucoma, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, seizure disorders like epilepsy, spastic conditions and things that cause spastic conditions like multiple uh, sclerosis and asthma and uh, cancer also course qualifies for medical marijuana and causes pain and nausea. So uh, if you have any of those conditions, we have uh, doctors who can help you. We have a physician referral service all across the western United States. We have doctors in Washington State, Oregon, California, Hawaii, Nevada, Colorado who can help you get a medical marijuana permit. If you're here in the Portland area, you can call our referral line at 503-235-46 06. That's 503-235-4606. Up in the Seattle area, uh, there are several doctors up there, and you can call us at 206-878-1701. That's 206-878-1701. We also have a Denver office, and you can call us in Denver at 303-403-9996. That's 303-403-9996. And if you are outside of the Portland, Seattle, or Denver area, anywhere in the western United States, you can call us toll-free at 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. And there are physicians, dozens of them, that are out there who are starting to specialize in cannabis therapy, and uh, they're happy to help qualified patients. We have another caller, though. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, good evening. The reason I'm calling, I was wondering if you could help me understand what the legal definition of chronic pain would be. I was hurt on the job in March, and um, my latest MRI showed a herniated disc in the nerve root in the L4, L5 lumbar region. Uh -huh. And they've got me on Vicodin, morphine, everything else, but they still uh -huh. haven't found me medically stationary. Right. How right. how long do I have to be in pain before I qualify for a permit? Well, since you have, if you have an X-ray report that shows what you say, a herniated and bulging disc, then uh, that obviously isn't going to go away, and it's going to take a while to stabilize, maybe as much as six or eight months. But you right. don't have to wait that long. If you prefer to try medical marijuana with that condition, you can qualify right away. 
Okay, very good. And I do have the referral number. Great. I hate to Thank tell you this. Thank you very much. I love what you guys are doing. Thanks. We keep trying. Glad to help All right. you. I hate to okay. tell you this, but you know, if you're if you're not in chronic pain yet because of what you already said, you will be soon. So you're yeah. going to need it, definitely. Yeah. He's in severe pain. I that mean, that is no, obviously no severely doubt. painful. No doubt. Now, the question is whether it's long term. Exactly. Well, <laughs> herniated and bulging discs don't get better. You're going to I mean, they it. get a little bit better, but they don't get completely better, I know. even after operations. So. Uh, in fact, a lot of times with operations, <laughs> they can get a lot worse. I can say it's a very after, delicate surgery. After 24 surgeries myself, that some of them don't get better. You're yeah, right. I've had surgeries I wish I never had. Yeah, only had two surgeries. One was a good surgery, and one was a bad surgery. And I wish I'd never had that bad surgery done. But hindsight's 2020. That's true. Having had a partial laminectomy just a couple months ago, I can say that at least for me, the current state of surgery is really good because it ended 25 years of Yay. pretty much constant pain. Yay. Well, I'm happy to hear that works. Uh, that's a good deal. You know, it's all, it has yes. a lot to do with the surgeon you get. You want to yes. have a surgeon who does it like several times a week, if not several times a day, and not have somebody who it's their first time to do that surgery. You know, that's uh, For sure. another issue. Oh, our set is falling apart here. What will we do? Uh, get better duct tape next I week. I guess so. It's the <laughs> Velcro. You need fresh Velcro. <laughs> So it goes. Well, we are taking your call, so if you have a question for us, give us a call at 503-288-4448. Is this your CD? No, it's, what, it's, it's Dylan's. It's Dylan's. So Dylan's does that yours. have that song on it? No, sir. The THC song? Well, okay, so you put out, it's Candy for Dragons. And, is, and that's on your MySpace page? Yes, sir. All right. We'll be, are you going to do another song with Tim here in just a few minutes? We are. Uh, we are. Changing the weather off of there. All right. We look forward to that. We have another caller, though. Hello, caller. Hi, You're Paul. On the show. Hi. Hi. Hey, I was watching the show a couple of weeks ago, and I was wa you had some uh, cannabis milk in front of you. Oh, yeah. Where do you buy that at? Whole, what is it? Wild Oats has it. Uh, uh, Whole Foods has it. Um, there's several, a couple of different ones out there now. I don't know if these folks have a hemp milk from Manitoba Harvest. Uh, they have just about everything else. There's a Living okay. Harvest and uh, what was that other one? Bliss something. Hemp Bliss milk, I think is what the other one was. But I, I bought mine at uh, Wild Oats, and that other had come from Whole Foods. I would say okay. more and more health food stores are going to have these products, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Paul. You're welcome. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks for your question. You know, it's really good stuff. I like it. Uh, it tastes better to me than the soy milk. And, you know, with soy milk, uh, a lot of it's genetically modified. In fact, almost all soy in the United States uh, is genetically mo modified. It's been improved Whatever. so much. I mean, what the hemp products, when I went to my first hemp rally some 15 or 20 years ago, I can't remember now, but there was maybe two different hemp seed products that you could eat. Yeah. There, That was it. And neither one tasted all that they good. Were but we were, yeah, we were very them. encouraged that maybe we could do something with it someday. It was kind of grainy and all that, but now they it most of it tastes like food. It yeah, tastes, it tastes like it tastes it's good. giving you nourishment, and it, it has changed completely. I'm glad to see it finally has done that. Me too. Okay, we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hi. See, I I watched your show in a couple of different times. You've talked about uh, how to make hash, and I was wondering where I get the information on on the different ways to make hash? Oh, well, there's so many different ways. There are, uh, you can go out and buy one of the devices. They have bubble bags out there. We've had the guy Joe Pitreon with his uh, uh, hash making machine. That thing sure works well. I bought one. They're very expensive, but it works very well. Uh, you can use a silk screen and just grind your cannabis up on a thin silk screen. I have a big silk screen that was used to make t-shirts. And it has the image of the face of Sitting Bull and <laughs> Leonard Peltier there. My, my friend of mine found it at uh, Value Village Used Goods Store. And it's about four feet by three feet. And I use that to make hash. It works really well. That's a well, very see, I'm fine... I'm not familiar with silk screens. So. Yeah, you just grind it over there and the yellow powder falls out and you get it together and voila, you have key for powdered hash. And, you know, I prefer it a lot when it's it's powdered like that if you're going to have that sort. I've seen some other hashes though made recently with this ice process that melts 
You can't. They're uh-huh. not like the old hashes. They they're they're very very potent. And, and I use it in a vaporizer. Once you put a little bit of that, about a tenth of a gram, into your vaporizer, it just keeps vaporizing for hours. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. That stuff just <laughs> vaporizes and vapor. It's really tasty too. So yeah, things have a wonderful flavor with vaporizing. There are some videos out there. You can get them on DVD at various stores or out on the internet on how to make hash as well. So. We've shown okay, some great. clips of those on our show in the past, the art of hash making. And then uh, George Cervantes' Grow DVD mm-hmm. has a little section on how to make hashish on there as well. Now, do you have a class on Yeah, on we have hash? a class on, adva- on hash making. So you can come in and see how it's done. Now, only card holders can come to that class. You have to have a permit uh, from a doctor for medical marijuana. If you're from the state of Oregon, you've got to have the state permit. If you're up in Washington, you've got to have the doctor's note. And then we have classes available for patients. We don't want to teach everybody how to do it. Well, yeah, I have all my ducks in a row. So. All right. Hey, there's some there. Doesn't oh, that look, look tasty? That. Doesn't that look yummy? Yeah. Mm. I bet that would melt really <laughs> quick. So, yeah, just, just give us a call, and we'll be happy to, to – you can come down mm. – and you'd be amazed uh, how fun they are, too. Okay, well, thank you very much for the information. You guys do a great thing there, and, and it's great information. Glad to see you guys are out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your question and thank support. Thank you. Bye now. Bye bye. So, yeah, um, there's a lot of information out there. In, for, in terms of the classes, there's a set curriculum for each of the six, does, six classes right. that we have. Right. And uh, the medicine man, who, who's written some articles in uh, High Times Magazine and is screening those telephone calls as you're calling in right now, he uh, teaches those classes and doing a great job. I've, I've seen some, you know, they rate his classes, and I've seen one person, it was like 40 out of 10. So, you know, that's, that's a lot <laughs> that's, more than 10. That's and better than 10. Some are, are 15 out of 10, and a lot, I, very few of them are less than 10. But let's take another caller. Hello, caller, you're on the show. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Very well, how are you? And this is Will Flowers. Hey Will. I love watching you guys, you know. Well, we loved watching you when you're on the show too. <laughs> hey, I'm glad that Wolfie, uh, you just uh, said a lot of good things that we were all thinking, buddy. You know, hey, uh, It's pretty outrageous that the city won't give us a permit. We're going to fight it. Uh, we just got the word from the city uh, last week that they were saying, no, they're not going to issue the permit, even though... We put together a security plan. They didn't tell us what to put in it. They didn't tell us how we could make it better. Said, oh, no, you're, we're not going to do it. So our only alternative seems, now is the courts. seems to me that they would like to have us under a fishbowl for a little bit of time to see how we are when we take our medicine. You know, that's not what they want. They don't want to see another Seattle Hemp Fest in Portland, which might mean another Seattle Hemp Fest in Eugene and another... Hempfest in Boise and Denver, and pretty soon the whole nation has these multi hundred thousand people Hempfests, and then they've got to legalize it. And so the forces of evil are are gathering and and repulsing our attempts to uh, bring in the dawn of a new age and and bright light uh, upon our our gardens. And so uh, I think it's rumored among the uninitiated and the unknowing and the unknowledgeable that we uh, try to put on bunny suits and run around with machine guns or something. You know, that <laughs> That's an we, odd little picture there. You completely change our behavior. You know, well, no, we stay the same. We're very gentle, pin loving people, you know. And bunny they, suits, they okay. The Drop the machine guns. To, uh, to see what, how we I've are. I've never had a machine gun. I saw a Coke dealer with an Uzi once, but that's and, and all. Educate the people that way a little I bit. I didn't want it. You know, but I'm, yep. I'm so glad that Wolfie said those things, and uh, uh, show's going great. I'll let you get back off here and, and uh, talk to somebody else. Thank okay, you. thanks, Will. Bye-bye. Gee, we're getting down there. We've got less than five minutes to go, and we're going to have to go off, so we better bring this pretty quickly to a close. I uh, want to remind our viewers out there that if you are looking for a physician who can help you qualify for medical marijuana, we have a physician referral service in Portland. Call us at this number that's going to pop up on your screen. It's 503-235-4606. That's 503-235-4606. See, I told you, there it is. Thank you, Tekka. And then if you're up in Seattle, the Seattle number is 
1701. That's 206 878 1701. If you're out in the, the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado, call us at that number. It's 303 403 9996. That's 303 403 9996. And if you're outside of those three major metropolitan areas, you can call us at 1 800 8 or 723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. And we have physicians who can help you, or you can get involved in the movement to end adult marijuana prohibition. You know, also, we have a volunteer forum for Hempstock 07 on our website, the crrh.org website. So if you want to get involved in the Hempstock uh, uh, volunteer effort, then go to our website at crrh.org and take a look at that. And you'll find out more information about the medical clinics and our nonprofit organization's work at uh, our other website, hemp.org. That's www.hemp.org. We've got to thank Mr. Sean Savage for helping us get that name. So you gentlemen look like you're ready to launch into this music. Why not? I think that's a good idea, and I want to remind our viewers to tune in next week and help us restore him. All right. <laughs> Look out for the little bottles there. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. See you next week. Corey Brewer.